Hello and welcome to the Scatterville channel and today let's cover what I think are the best mid to high end gaming CPUs in mid 2023 through the means of yet another tier list. Now the budget range for this video is going to be covering CPUs starting at $200 and going all the way up to $450 because beyond that point you really are kind of entering a land of diminishing returns and any extra $100 you spend isn't gonna add up to any real meaningful extra performance in gaming that is. That said though, I do wanna stress that you really can't go wrong with any of these CPUs that I'm about to talk about in this video because unlike the case with graphics cards, the CPU market is really competitive and AMD and Intel have to one-up each other to stay ahead of the game and continue getting sales for their platform. So there's a lot of great options to choose from in this video with the exception of one, so with that said, I'll be linking every single CPU I discuss in this video, with the exception of that one bad one, down in the description below if you wanna check any of them out for your next or current gaming PC. So we're gonna get started real quick right after a word from our sponsor. If you just built a brand new gaming PC and you're looking to activate Windows or even software like Microsoft Office, then do consider taking a look at Kingwin.net. Whether you have Windows 10 Home or 11, Home or Pro, Kingwin can offer you a variety of discounted keys to activate your version of Windows on your personal computer, to finally get rid of that annoying watermark in the bottom right of your screen, and also to finally give you full access to all the features of Windows without having to perform any hassling workarounds. Better yet, you can get even more savings from kingwin.net if you use my discount code seen here on screen for an additional percentage off. So seriously, it doesn't take much to get your favorite software from kingwin.net for less. So do check them out at the top of the description to see what they can do for you. All right, first up, we have the i5-12600KF. And you know what? Let's start off the video with a bang with none other than a C tier. <gasps> Yeah, so the 12600K by no means is a bad CPU. I'd say about a year and a half ago, it was actually pretty good. Just what makes it C tier is that it's just simply older. There are literally other gaming CPUs within dollars of the $200 price point of the 12600K that are just better for gaming. So once again, this is not a bad gaming CPU by any means, but just by the means of it being older, it gets a C tier because next up, we have the Ryzen 5 7600 and 7600X. And I'm bundling both in together because right now they are the exact same price on Amazon and pretty similar on Newegg and Micro Center. So I'm just gonna consider both for this next CPU. So this is a six core CPU that costs $220 and the 7600 is the more energy efficient, less heat outputting, not slightly as fast, version of the 7600 that does come with a stock cooler, whereas the 7600 is the opposite of that, doesn't come with a stock cooler, but it is gonna give you the most performance out of that six core layout of that Ryzen 7000 CPU. Now, when those CPUs first came out, I think their prices were a little steep for a six core CPU, but they've come down so much in price to where the performance you're getting out of this six core CPU is simply too good to pass up at its price. And let it be known, cores aren't everything for gaming. Even in 2023, I've heard this argument literally over the last 10 years, back in the AMD FX days when they had eight core CPUs that were still slower than four core Intel CPUs. And that still is very relevant today because despite this being a six core CPU, it still ranks very high in the benchmark charts. And that is because it's single threaded performance is very good. So for its price, I'm giving the 7600 and 7600X an A tier. Which brings us next to the i5-13500. So this CPU is kind of in no man's land because it costs $250 and more or less is a slightly nerfed 13600K just without the overclocking and not as much L2 cache, but it's actually not too terrible. For gaming, for its price, there are better CPUs, again, within dollars of the 13500, although it is a 13th generation CPU. So the 13500, say over the 13400, is technically a 20 core processor. So I think out of this whole video, if you're looking for the most cores and threads for the money, or in this case for an Intel CPU, the most P cores and E cores, the 13500F or the 13500 at its price 
is going to be the best for that. So if you're any sort of CPU intensive workload or creative application person who needs a CPU for more than just gaming, especially with integrated graphics, then the 13500 makes a lot of sense for its price. But strictly for the means of this video being a gaming tier list, unfortunately, I gotta give it a C tier below the 12600K because I think the 12600K is still a slightly faster CPU over the 13500. But then let's go ahead and talk about the 12600K's bigger brother, the 12700K. And once again, not a bad CPU by any means. I mean, literally a year and a half ago, I would have probably said the 12700K was the best CPU out of Intel's 12th gen lineup. But just because the game for making good CPUs is getting more and more challenging by the years between AMD and Intel, whatever's their previous generation is just outdated and slower. So therefore for its price, I gotta give it a C tier. Because literally within I think $15 of the 12700K, you can get yourself a Ryzen 7700 or 7700X, which once again are very close in price and have their slight differences. And really, I'm gonna be straight up with you, for 90% of you, no, 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 let's say about for 75% of you who are watching this video, who may wanna build a brand new system, you really don't need more than a 7700 or a 7700X. Both of them are eight core 16 threaded CPUs on the Ryzen 7000 platform using DDR5 RAM. And if you look at the benchmark charts, there's just something with that eight core layout that makes it the best for gaming, even more so in certain scenarios over the 12 core and 16 cores brothers of these CPUs. Those being the 7900X and 7850X. Sorry, the 7950X. A lot of tongue twisters in this video. Also, unlike those 12 and 16 core variants, the eight core 7700 and 7700X runs cooler, is more efficient, and in gaming, it, like I said earlier, is just about the same in terms of performance. You won't be able to tell that much of a difference. So really, I think this is the sweet spot, making the 7700 and 7700X an easy S tier recommendation for me. Oh, but here's one we do need to address. What about the 5000X 3D series of CPUs, like the 5800X 3D and the upcoming 5600X 3D? Which as of publishing this video isn't out yet, but more or less I can draw the same conclusions from. If you are still on AM4 and you need a CPU upgrade, there is literally no other choice for gaming than the 5800X 3D and the soon to be released 5600X 3D. At their prices, they are excellent. This I think right now is running for $305 and the 5600X 3D is gonna be around $200. So really competitive. But if you're building a brand new system, do not get one of these CPUs because for the same price, you can get a 7700X. And I know you're gonna say, but wait, last generation AM4 motherboards are cheaper than the new AM5 motherboards. DDR4 RAM is cheaper than DDR5 RAM. And while that was very much a true case, when these CPUs first came out, DDR5 RAM is at a very stupid cheap price right now. So really affordable, way more than last year. And you know what? AM5 motherboards have been coming down in price because the socket has been out for longer. And that correlates with how much cheaper these Ryzen 7000 CPUs have been getting. So if you're building a brand new system, pass up on these X3D chips from 5,000. Get yourself a 7700X or 7700 over one of these. But give credit where it's due, this has the X3D cache technology, making it really good in gaming, especially for any CPU limited scenarios. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it an A tier rating, but near the end because I don't recommend it for new systems. But if you're on AM4, you are much better off buying one of these X3D chips from the 5000 series for a CPU upgrade over buying a whole new setup for motherboard, CPU, and processor on Ryzen 7000 or Intel 13th or 14th gen for that matter. Which then leads us to back to Intel through the form of the Intel 13600K. This one's a little bit weird because when it first released in comparison to Ryzen, when it was more expensive, the 13600K was actually a pretty good deal. But Ryzen has come down so much in price that it has kind of faltered a little bit along with that for my recommendation. 
which is why I'm gonna put it at a B tier. Once again though, if you are more than just a gamer, if you're say a creative professional who needs something for like the integrated graphics and Intel Quick Sync decoder in this 13600K, or if you just need more cores and more threads than what Ryzen can offer at around this price point, then the 13600K does make more sense. But for gaming, it's just getting beat by Ryzen with that 7700X and 7700 now costing less than this CPU. So that's why it belongs in B tier. Oh, and then the next one, the 12900K, <sighs> D tier. I know, it's weird to put the previous best generation CPU from Intel down in D tier for its price of $368. And that's just because the i7-13700K exists. Once again, you really can't go wrong with any of the CPUs in this video, other than the 12900K, just because the rate at which these generational improvements are happening across AMD and Intel are so dramatic to keep one up in each other to where the previous generation is just slower and sometimes in terms of pricing, not worth it despite being cheaper, such as with the 13700K because it is a decisively faster CPU versus the 12900K. I guess you could say it's the more sensible option between that and the really overkill 13900K because this is just gonna dump so much heat and take up so much wattage in your system, whereas the 13700K is more or less gonna achieve about the same performance as this. Maybe not according to the benchmark charts, but if you were to load up both of these CPUs side by side, you wouldn't be able to tell any difference. And for its price right now of $380, it is a fair bit cheaper than the 7900 and 7900X 3D, which we'll be talking about soon. So for that reason, I gotta put it right in the middle of A tier. I think the 7600 and 7600X are a better value and are still way too good performing for their price but the 13700K and the F model is probably the best 13th gen CPU. Do not go any farther than that because you're just getting into territory that doesn't make sense for a gaming CPU. Sort of like what we're about to see with the 7900 and 7900X. So these technically do fit within the bounds of this video, but if I could, I would not even include them because they are 12 core CPUs. And I kid you not, there's instances where the eight core variants of the 7700X and 7700 outperform the 7900 and 7900X just because that eight core layout is slightly better optimized for gaming. And also don't kid yourself, if you're a streamer, you're fine with eight cores. Running OBS in the background on top of your game, even if you're using say NVEC or AV1 for your stream encoder, is not gonna put that much extra pressure on your CPU to warrant a 12 or 16 core CPU. Eight cores is still totally fine if you're a streamer who needs just a little bit more than just a regular say six core gaming CPU. So these 12 core CPUs, in my opinion, are kind of irrelevant but they're not bad for the price because they have been seeing some pretty good discounts. And once again, like what I was saying with the 7600, cores aren't everything for gaming performance, single threaded performance matters. Therefore, I'm giving the 7900 and 700X at their about $420 price tag, a B tier recommendation above the 13600K. And yes, I would put them below the 13700K because they literally draw in terms of performance. They're just about the same, but the 13700K is cheaper, is on a slightly more affordable platform, slightly, and it does come with much better integrated graphics for more creative applications if you at all need to look into that. Whereas the integrated graphics that come on all Ryzen 7000 CPUs are like just the most basic for just literally displaying out to your monitor for like troubleshooting purposes. They stop at that point. They don't go any farther beyond that with no special like Intel Quick Sync decoder. And this all leads us to our final CPU in this video and you absolutely do not need to go any farther than this for a gaming CPU. Do not look at the 12 core and 16 core variants of the CPU because they're pretty much throwing money away if you're a gamer because we are covering next the 7800X 3D. Eight cores, 16 threads, comes with AMD's 3D vCache technology and is the best gaming CPU on the market. Even better than the 7950X 3D 
and this 7900X 3D. Because once again, that eight core layout is just slightly better optimized for just peak gaming performance. Oh, and better yet, it runs way better than those 12 and 16 core variants. It runs with less wattage and is more efficient. And your system isn't going to be burning up. It just makes way more sense to get this CPU over those other two, or for that matter, even this one for gaming. Stop. Stop at the 7800X 3D. You don't need anything more than this because at 450 bucks, you're gonna be set for the next like five or six years. Therefore, I have no other choice but to give it the very top of S tier. It is the king and at its price, it makes all the others above it for gaming purposes, just simply irrelevant. So there you have it. That is my tier list for the best mid to high end gaming CPUs in mid 2023 before the new Ryzen 7000 or refresh CPUs come out later this year and whatever 14th gen Intel has in store for us. Because once all of those come out, then I'll eventually need to update this video probably eight months from now. So with all that said, that is it. And I wanna thank you guys who have made it to this point in the video. And I would also appreciate it if you could give this video a like, that'll just help it out. And if you've enjoyed this style of commentary up until this point in the video, if you're still watching, you probably wanna subscribe because most of my videos are probably gonna be like this. And once again, all of the CPUs I discussed in this video will be linked in the description below if you wanna check out any of them. So with all of that said, thank you so much for watching, and this is the Scatterable Channel, signing out.